start live cycle 201 this is going to be part one check boxes so we're going to begin where we left off and we're going to start with our template that we made in live cycle 101 class and so if you need to return to the live cycle 101 and and revisit what it, what this template is and how we made it and the hierarchy here and everything we've named go do that on video number one of live cycle 101 and now in 201, we're going to start talking about some of the form fields that you find here in the object library that are utilized most often. And then some creative ways to use those to make your form fillable, collapsible, dynamic, all those good things. So first I'm going to just add my header and footer to my form. And then I'm going to, going to go get another text box that's empty. And I'm going to paste in a bunch of dummy text that I got from Google like that and we're going to act as if this is some kind of user agreement that uh, you commonly see maybe on a website or a form where you're you're consenting to certain terms and conditions and I'm going to just call it terms and put a checkbox at the bottom of this to indicate that I agree to the terms and conditions and I'm just going to put that in in the caption here Okay, and this is a checkbox. And with this checkbox, you have some options. You can have an on off state or an on off neutral. You can have the size of the check. So I've made that 12. You see how that increased the size of that little box right there? If I go back to 10, watch it go down a little bit. I like that 10 or 12. I have an appearance, solid square, sunken square. These are just the way that the box looks that has the three dimensional look to it. I personally prefer solid square. And then the check style, that means when the when the user actually checks it, what's it going to look like? Default is like a an X, a big X in the box. That's a, like a tick mark, circle cross, diamond square. I like square myself. And so I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to rename the checkbox CK terms like that. And I'm going to put it in my hierarchy in the correct order. So we have header on top, the terms box the checkbox terms and then the footer down here at the bottom and remember we're keeping we're maintaining this because right now this is a positioned page and if we change it to float which we will in a minute we want everything to stay in the right order float means use the hierarchy to order the objects position means use the XY coordinates of each individual object to determine position All right, so I agreed to the above terms and conditions and then I'm gonna put a signature field under here like this and make it quite big and I want to make this signature field hidden in other words I don't want to see the signature field until they've agreed to the terms and conditions so I want to hide that by going over here under the object tab and the field tab and saying hidden and you see how that made it disappear it's not there if I go to visible it reappears back to hidden and then I'm going to call this TXT Sig1. That's a fine name. And then I'm going to change this to float. And when I do that, everything shrinks together. Now watch though. I got to remember my order here. Put that in the right order. Watch though when I make this visible again. You see how the True Tech troubleshooting bottom footer moved down to make room for the signature when it was visible. But when it's invisible, I'm sorry, when it's hidden, it goes away when it's invisible it leaves the real estate space there and keeps TrueTech troubleshooting where it was before so that's the difference in invisible and hidden for now I'm just gonna use hidden because it's easier and then I'm gonna do a little something with the checkbox I want the checkbox and whether or not it's checked to determine whether I see the signature field or not so in other words this is my form and I don't want them to be able to sign the form until or unless they agree to the terms and conditions and so that has to be checked now every checkbox has some value to it under the binding tab it has an on value and an off value and that's by default set to on value of one and off value of zero so in other words the value of this checkbox if it's checked is one or equal to one 
and if it's unchecked the value of the checkbox is equal to zero. That doesn't seem like that matters much, it seems redundant, but it matters when we're doing scripting. And so I want to introduce a very simple script to this form. So I want to view my script editor. I want to highlight the check terms checkbox and then I want to go to the click event. And our language of course is JavaScript. And so I want to make a simple hide show script based on what it, either the box is checked or not checked. So in other words, every time someone clicks the checkbox, I want JavaScript to determine if the check event or the click event made the checkbox checked or unchecked. And if it's checked, I want to show the signature field. If it's unchecked, I want it to hide the signature field. And so I do that with a simple if statement in JavaScript. If this dot raw value equal equals one. And what am I saying here? I'm saying this, that's the JavaScript nomenclature for the object I'm currently scripting under. So I'm scripting under form one, main, CK terms, the name of this checkbox. So if CK terms raw value equals equals one, meaning if the raw value is checked, then what I want to happen? I want txt sig one dot presence to equal visible. And what I'm saying there is I want this object, txt sig, that we hid at design time to then at runtime be visible. And then I also want to say if this dot raw value equals equals zero txt sig one dot presence equals hidden. In other words, if I accidentally checked it, but then I decide no, really I don't agree, and I uncheck it, I want the signature field to hide again. So let me expand this so you can see it all at once. Very simple if statement. These little braces are just JavaScript syntax, and you can go all over the web and look up syntax and how to make sure everything's correctly punctuated in JavaScript. Also in the script editor you can click this check script syntax button and it will tell you if you have a problem. So like it's saying there's a problem with this open brace and there's no following close brace before the next if. And so it highlights that. And I gotta make sure I have that there. So it's just a little simple check. So this is about as simple as a script can get in JavaScript. Make it visible if it's checked. Make it invisible if not. And this is keyed upon though, remember, the zero and the one value is keyed upon the on and off value here. All right, so let's save this as, we'll call this terms and conditions sample. And now let's preview it. So right now we have our header our terms and conditions, our checkbox, and our footer. And let's click the checkbox now. And once we make it checked, then we get the signature field, which we can then click on and sign. If we uncheck it, it disappears. So very simple, but it creates a dynamic effect that really harnesses the power of lifecycle. You could go a lot farther with this effect. You could make for example, a series of questions where if you check yes, then you get a supplemental question and that appears. Or if you check no, the supplemental question goes away, it hides. You could have whole sections of the form collapse or disappear based on what the check is. So for instance, we could go in here and say, when this is checked, I want not just the signature field visible, I also want the label terms presence to be visible. But when it's unchecked, I want label terms presence to be hidden. Now, of course, this doesn't make a lot of sense in the logic of the form, but just notice what this does then by adding something like this. You see at design time, we're not hiding this thing, we're letting it show. But now at runtime, 
when we check this, nothing happens because it's still on. The checkbox is still on, but when we uncheck it, it disappears. Again, it doesn't flow with the logic of this particular form, but you could use that. So at the beginning, by default, an object is visible, but after the check or subsequent uncheck, something becomes invisible. So checkboxes are very powerful for this kind of hide show and other things too. You could have all kinds of complicated scripts under there. But I just want to show you the basics of this and let your imagination take it further. All right, so that's part one. And we're going to go through one by one a lot of these different objects in the rest of this series and drill down into some interesting things you can do in Adobe Lifecycle. So be sure to check out the next video in the Lifecycle 201 series.